Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Zero Hour Live. We are into week eight. Captain Logan is out celebrating Father's Day because he has two children and a life, but we don't. So we're here instead. Joining me today is the Curious Lo. Hello. And Rasco. Howdy, everybody. So this is also a pretty slow news week, so we probably won't do too much news. We'll probably end up doing more Q&A, uh, open forum stuff, but... We're going to go ahead and get right into it. I didn't see any question of the week. Did you guys? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, I looked for it around, um, I looked for it around the, the messages and Facebook and such, but I didn't see any. So we'll, if someone can find it, let us know, and we'll probably answer it towards the end. Uh, the first thing we'll mention tonight is the weekend box office. Uh, Finding Dory dominated. It got $136 million, which is the highest opening for an animated movie ever. Uh, both Rasco and Lowe saw that, and they both really liked it. After that, it's Central Intelligence, who had made $34 million, then The Conjuring 2, followed by Now You See Me 2, and then Warcraft, which is dying pretty quickly. It went down by 73% this week, which is pretty bad, but it's doing well in China. I got around to seeing Warcraft uh, yesterday, actually, and I really enjoyed it. I know nothing about Warcraft. I've never played Warcraft or World of Warcraft. Like I had no knowledge going in. And I thought it was really fun. Uh, I don't know what the critics are talking about. I, I have not watched your guys' discussion video that you guys did, so I don't know how any of you feel about it. But I really liked it. So yeah, I thought it was super fun. I, I mean, it's not like Lord of the Rings level like cinema or anything, but like I, it was really fun. I loved all the characters. It was really witty, which is something that you don't see a lot in like high fantasy stuff. So I don't know. I liked it. Yeah, it's it's definitely what I want from a fantasy movie with the way they use magic and the color palette yeah. and even at the end the action. Like I think it's more epic than any of the Hobbit movies. Oh, don't get me started on the Hobbit movies. We'll get there with <laughs> Fantasy Rewind someday. Um, we probably won't get a review out of Finding Dory unless you guys want to do one, but just briefly because I know people are excited about it. What did you guys think of that movie? I didn't get a chance to see it yet. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. I can't say much more. I just loved it so much. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. It was really. It was. It really well integrated itself with the first Finding Nemo movie. Like, it feels like a good companion piece for that. And like, I don't know if they're gonna go for a third, but I, I liked it enough. I, I think it was a pretty good movie. So, definitely not. I think morning. the only negative thing I would say is that there were a couple times, and this was only in the first half of the movie, that you could tell that they were sort of trying to shoehorn in some of the stuff from the previous movie just about, like, you know, like, they had to get Crush in there, and they had to have, like, Just Keep Swimming, and, like, some things like that, that I was sort of like, okay, I get it, like, let's go with actual <laughs> plot. But the second half of the movie was amazing. I cried a lot. <laughs> it's not saying much. I cry very easily in movies, but I still cried a lot. <laughs> I haven't been crazy about Pixar lately. Like, I I didn't love Inside Out. It was in my top ten last year. I thought last, last year was pretty weak for movies. But if, if this is back Pix, uh, Pixar true to form, then I'm excited. I wasn't crazy about Inside Out either. I haven't really mm -hmm. liked, like, loved a Pixar movie since Brave. But I know that I'm in the minority on that. Not a lot of people liked Brave, so. I like Brave Maybe I'm just weird. I love Brave. It's my second favorite Pixar movie. <laughs> Um, okay, we'll go ahead and go right into some of the news. We'll start with the biggest thing and then work our way down, because there's lots of boring stuff today that we'll have nothing to say about. But the most exciting, biggest news this week is that Superman has been cast for Supergirl. He is being played by Tyler Holiner, Holichinler, however you say that name. I don't uh, know how to say it, but I'm really excited. <laughs> He was on Teen Wolf. He was in Everyone Wants Some, the new Richard Linklater movie, but I have not seen him in anything. I had no idea who he was when he was cast. He's really, really... I mean, I haven't, I've haven't. i only seen him in Teen Wolf, so I don't know about other stuff, but his character in Teen Wolf is, like, really stoic and very intense, um, and not that that is necessarily what Superman has to be, but that is a way that he is portrayed sometimes, and I could see that working. Um... I will say that you don't see a lot of tenderness from him as that character, so I wonder how that'll work with him primarily being in the show because he's supposed to be, like, a mentor for Kara. Like, I imagine they want some, like, familial, like, tenderness between the two of them, so it'll be interesting to see that from him, but I think he looks the part, and 
I think he's an okay actor from what I've seen. I mean, it's basically a CW show that's slightly wittier than a CW show, <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah. My my big concern with him, I, I, I watched an interview with him, and he talks about incorporating Clark Kent's humor into the play, into the piece, which is exciting. I, I like that he gets that about him. But the big thing that worries me is Kyra came to Earth as a as a little girl, like what, twelve years old, thirteen years old max, and Superman was already Superman, and this actor is only one year older than than the actress that plays Supergirl. So it's going to be weird to have them on screen together, almost identical in age but he's supposed to be, like, ten years older. If he dons a beard, I think that it'll work. I love bearded Superman. Because <laughs> Duke has been freaking out about that on Twitter, and I just keep posting pictures of Tyler with a beard. <laughs> yeah, but that's exciting. I think he'll be fine. It's just a matter of if the script's good. If the script's good and he's not given anything to work with, then, then too bad. But I'm glad we're finally getting a Superman on television again, and he looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, Rasko, anything you want to mention? I don't know. I'm just excited to see his suit because I really like the Supergirl suit. Me too. Yeah. Um, I hope we get a picture of that pretty soon. Um, the other thing, uh, as far as casting goes, is that Spider-Man Homecoming keeps getting people added to the list. Uh, the big name that we'll talk about tonight is Donald Glover, who is in Community. He was in The Martian. He's one of my favorite actors, and the rumor is he's going to play Harry Osborn, which is awesome. Yeah. That Whoa, is. really? I didn't see that. I just thought that he was cast. That's I talk, awesome. I heard some people talking about it on the blue chat. I looked into it. There are apparently a few sites saying that he's rumored to be uh, Harry Osborn, and that's awesome. I don't know how he'll gel with like a 19-year-old actor for Peter Parker, but I'm excited either way. Yeah, it's, he seems a lot older than Peter, but that'll be cool. Yeah, he, he seems a lot older older than him, but Childish... Well, I always call him Childish Gambino. <laughs> I'm just going to call him that. <laughs> Go for it. So, Try like, Barnes. He's that weird. He's, he's a young enough looking guy, and he's got a really young voice, so I think I don't think it's going to be that strange. People of yeah. different ages... Yeah. Older actors play high schoolers all the time. Like That's not a shocking thing at all. Yeah, in, I mean, it's ultimately going to be community. chemistry. In season one of Community, he was playing somebody who had just graduated high school, and he was at least 25 at that point, so... Yeah, yeah, and he's great <laughs> in Community. He he felt like a teenager yeah. all the way through that, so that's fine. Um, I love him. I think he's hysterical. He, I know he wanted to be Miles Morales at some point, and some people want him to be that in this movie, but I don't want a Miles that's older than Peter. I think it, Miles has to be inspired by Peter, or it's a different character. Uh, the Harry Osborn idea I like a lot better, and if we're going to have um, him as Harry Osborn, can we get D.B. Woodside as Norman Osborn? Because that would be amazing. Um, um, Javier76 just said, Troy and Harry in the morning. <laughs> and it made you <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I, I hope they do that. I hope after credit scene is him filming a morning <laughs> TV show. <laughs> With the cups and everything. Uh, yeah, with the cups and everything. That'd be fantastic. And no one else is in on the joke except him. Uh, I love it. <laughs> that just makes me wish the Russo's were the one directing Spider-Man, just because it would be like community reunion. Um, we have more people in the cast, as well as the, a person from Prometheus named Logan Marshall Green, and um, someone from The Incredible Hulk, whose name is Martin Starr. Um, I forget who he was in Hulk. Was, could he be the leader? <laughs> I don't think he was the leader. Was he the leader? I don't know. Oh, man. That actor was also in Fan Stick. Was he in Fan Stick? Okay, then I don't remember at all. Because um, I don't remember... I barely remember that movie as it is. Oh, well, I'm saying the Whoa. guy who played the leader was also in Fan Stick. I don't know who the actor that you're talking about is that guy, but, like, I'm, I don't know. I'm confused. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Logan Marshall Green looks just like um, Tom Hardy. Does he? It's kind of it's weirding me out. <laughs> he looks like a younger version of Tom Hardy. Yeah, I see a picture of him. Anyways, <laughs> he does look exactly like Tom Hardy. That's freaky. Well, maybe he can play Bane in another Batman movie, and maybe a good one this time. <laughs> um, I don't have a lot to say about that. Spider Man's been getting so much casting news lately. I kind of wish we would just know who's playing who because they keep announcing people without a name attached. Mm-hmm. Um, like, we know Michael Keaton's in the movie, but some people say he's Vulture, some people say he's Norman Osborn, and I would just like to know at this point. Yeah. I don't know. I always get on board those, like, hype trains of, 
like trying to figure out what's happening with a movie. So I yeah. like it, but I can understand how that would be. It would just be nice because we've had so many Spider-Man origin movies. We had so much of him being in school. I would just like to know like what supporting cast they're using because we've done Gwen Stacy, we've done Mary Jane. It'd be fun to get like some other Peter Parker love interest in or do more with Harry and Peter, but we don't even know if Harry's going to be in the movie at this point. Uh, it would just be nice to have something concrete is all. Um, we'll keep going casting-wise because there's lots of casting news this week. Apparently, Gotham Season 3 is going to recast Poison Ivy to be older. And I don't know why. Apparently, she's going to have a larger role in Season 3. But if that's the case, why can't they just use the actress they've got? I don't understand. Yeah, like, are they going to, like, just pretend that she... Like, I don't understand that. Like, are they, like, retconning her? And, like, like I don't understand. Like, that's just confusing. Yeah, she it's was a awesome. massive part of the first few episodes. It's Gotham, and I have a feeling they're going to do some sort of convoluted, like, aging serum that, you know like, do. turns her into a teenager. That's what it will happen. What will happen is that she'll get her powers, and her powers make her older. <laughs> For whatever reason. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a messed up show. I don't understand half of it. I've dropped it, but I love watching Eric tear his hair out over it, so I might pick up with season three. Uh, the other casting news we got this week is that... Uh, who is this here? Sorry, I just had lots of notes this week. Uh, we have Arrow casting. Apparently Arrow is casting a new Vigilante character for Season 5. Uh, it's going to be District Attorney Adrian Cross who becomes the Vigilante. And that's cool, that's, I guess. That's kind of cool. I'm excited I mean, for that. Like, <laughs> what the heck? That's yeah, strange. Why not? Um, he's he's being played by um, Josh Sergara, Sergara, something like that. He was on Sirens, which I haven't seen, but I heard is good. And Adrian Cross just started showing up in the Teen Titans stuff I'm reading, and he's an interesting character. I like Vigilante, but isn't it weird that every time Arrow elects some kind of official, they always end up either dying or turning evil? Yeah. Like, how does that city run day to day? They need government intervention in Starling City. Like, well, it's Star City now. It's been Star City for like a season and a half. Yeah. Um, I I have no idea what's up with that. Um, Arrow has gotten so bad lately that it might eventually turn into Gotham territory if just making fun of it. Yeah. But. I guess that's kind of cool. I guess this is their way of doing Red Hood with with the way um, with the way uh, Vigilante's costumes been redesigned lately to look more like a helmeted piece. Um, that's it for casting news. The only other the only other things I have now are um, one is from Indiana Jones. Apparently, Steven Spielberg has said that they are not killing off Harrison Ford in the next movie. I don't know why anyone would think that they would kill off Harrison Ford. That's exactly what I was gonna say. I was like, we didn't, we didn't think that was the rumor, but thank you for confirming. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just ruined any suspense. I was, I was, I didn't know if he was gonna die or not, Steven Spielberg. <laughs> everything, everything that has come out lately about the new Indiana Jones movies just makes me like really sad and apprehensive because I love. Indiana Jones so much. Like, I like it more than Star Wars. That was, like, my childhood. I've seen this movie so many times. And they just keep saying things that, like, are the complete opposite direction that I want them to take the franchise. Granted, it could be amazing. I don't even, like, jump the gun or anything, but everything they say just makes me mad. Not that I want them to kill off Harrison Ford, but the fact that they said that is just such a weird... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not crazy about them keeping... Harrison Ford for future movies, I really feel like you could either keep going with, with Shia LaBeouf as his kid or just recast him. Her Indiana Jones is a concept before it's an actor in the way Harrison, in the way Han Solo really isn't. Han Solo is just Harrison Ford. And yeah. it's, it's weird that we were going to take a character like Indiana Jones that's all pulp hero classic and just have him perpetually stuck with one actor. I feel like that kind of hurts that character's legacy going forward. Yeah, because, like, the whole point of him is that he's in a very specific era, and it's, like, the heyday of, like, find... Like, you don't see that type of archaeology anymore where you're, like, 
going into a tomb and like finding these artifacts and like all these different things like there's a very specific time period for that and going forward in time I don't know he he should be a bond character he should be a bond character he he like bond... just go on and have that legacy and be recast every couple of years but yeah cuz i mean part of the issue is the fun of indiana jones is also him going around like fighting nazis and stuff and mm-hmm. the more the further away you get from that the, the less it feels like Indiana Jones. And none of those movies are, like, massive character pieces. There's some interesting character stuff in there, but it's so much about the adventure and the thrill and the aesthetic, and you can't replicate that modern day. Yeah, and it's also weird because it's not... And this kind of makes Kingdom of the Crystal Skull worse because it's it's really that movie that made the mistake. Like, it's that yeah. movie that established that old Indiana Jones is Harrison Ford... And, like, that Indiana Jones in the franchise will age. And, like, that's what's really weird about it. And it's really on that movie. And this was kind of like them, I guess, just being like, well, we already made the mistake. Let's just keep going with it anyway. But, like, mmm, that bothers me. Me too. Yeah, I agree. Um, we have more comic book news to cover in a minute, but I want to mention this because everyone in the comments is mentioning it. I kind of wanted to save this for a little bit later, but it's part of the discussion as is. Um, Anton Yelchin died either late last night or earlier this morning. He was 27 and he died in a car accident. Um, he was he was Chekhov in the new Star Trek movies. He was in this Bright Bright remake, which is amazing, by the way. Yeah, it is. Um, it's one of the best remakes ever. I love the Bright Love remake. that movie. Um, and... He, he was amazing. It's sad to see him die. It's been a crazy year as far as deaths are concerned. Yeah. Really sad. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I know. I don't know what to say. It's just sad. and Yeah, uh. yeah I agree. I mean, I liked him a lot. He, he was a great yeah. actor. He was um, Kyle Reese in Sel- Terminator Salvation. I don't hate Terminator Salvation, but I loved him in that part, even though he didn't get a lot to do. I feel like he could have done more in future Terminator movies. Um, I don't know. There's just a lot with that actor that I'm gonna miss, and I wish he got to uh, to keep working. And from what I understand of interviews and and charity stuff, he was also a really good guy. Um, that he didn't act like a celebrity at all, and that's that's a shame that he's gone. Well, I mean, you never you never heard about he was in a movie. Yeah, and I feel like for the most part, that's because they aren't getting into like tabloid trouble. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah. <laughs> It's sad all around. And yeah, it's just been an awful year for I feel like we've lost so many people so quickly from the like entertainment industry. And this is like the first one that's been like a very young person that's yeah. high profile. It's been a lot more of the older kind of like other generation, but I don't know. This guy's only a year older than me. Like that's crazy. Yeah. And it, it sucks because like he was he was a good actor that like had many roles in the future. Like, he could have maybe later, like, taken on, like, a big, like, mainstay character role of some sort. Like, he's a, like, he was perfect for that kind of thing. And, like, it's really sad because he was so young. It feels yeah. like if you gave him a couple of years, he would have worked his way out of character parts and finally become, like, a regular course leading man type actor, or maybe even, like, a superhero role or something. Yeah. And he just got cut off. It's the same thing with Heath Ledger, where he did so many character pieces, and then he became the Joker, and then he died. And there was clearly a future laid out for that guy, and it's just gone. Yeah. Well, I'm not on that sad note. I know. <laughs> It's a good thing not to not to end on that note. Now we can build ourselves back up after that. This is the low point. This is the low point. But to build, up. to build ourselves up from that, um, the other thing I want to mention, movie related, before we move on to main comic book stuff, is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two has now wrapped filming, and according to the director James Gunn, the toy line is going to have a bigger focus on Gamora and. Um, Whoever Karen Gillan's character is, I forget her name. The daughter of Thanos. Um, I forget what her. Or... It starts with like an N, doesn't it? Nebula. Yeah, yeah. Nebula. There we go. Um, it's gonna have a bigger focus. Nebula. On that. They're gonna, okay. <laughs> they're gonna get more female characters and such in the toy line, which is cool. And the first Guardians of the Galaxy is a movie I liked a lot, and then over time I've liked it less and less. But I'm excited for the second one. Yeah. Um. I'm just kind of like a James Gunn fan. I know not everybody likes James Gunn, but, like, I was excited for Guardians because it was a James Gunn movie and, like, even things like uh, his Dawn of the Dead. James Gunn's got a very particular... Um, he's he's an auteur. You can always tell when you're watching a James Gunn movie, at least. 
So I'm excited for it and have no reason not to be. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's wrapped filming now. It's going to be at Comic-Con along with the cast. Some people are saying we're probably going to get a trailer either in the next couple months or probably at Comic-Con, uh, which is exciting. And Guardians of the Galaxy only came out three years ago, but it's already altered how we're making a lot of movies. Like, Suicide Squad would not be Suicide Squad marketing without Guardians of the Galaxy. So it'll be interesting to see how they recapture that lightning in a bottle for, for the next trailer and the next um, awesome mix. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so that's all the big movie stuff. Uh, after this, there's two things I want to mention that are comic book related. The first is DC's Rebirth is going to have its first crossover with the Batman books. Uh, it's going to have Nightwing, Batman, and Detective Comics, and it's going to be called Night of the Monster Men, where Batman and his team apparently just attack are attacked by giant rampaging monsters, and they're going to stop them. Nice. Yeah, that's that's kind of awesome. Um, <laughs> Matt Wagner wrote a story called Batman and the Monster Men. It was the first part of the Dark Moon Rising duology, and it was based on the original Hugo Strange story back in the Golden Age. So just out of curiosity, I wonder if this has any kind of connection to Hugo Strange or that classic story. It probably doesn't, because these don't look like monster men. They look like... There's a giant spider with a man face, and then there's a giant dragon with blonde hair, and I just I don't understand where these are going, but it sounds cool. I have no idea what to make of those descriptions. I have not seen the pictures yet, and that sounds ridiculous. I will I will have to send everybody the link, but it's <laughs> I have no idea. It's just bizarre. Batman and Batwoman are jumping across the screen and fighting a giant dragon with blonde hair and three eyes and, like, an alien mouth, and I have no idea. So, whatever. Hmm. That looks cool. Um, the next Affleck Batman movie. Yes. That's got to be the next Affleck movie. Um, according to Mind the Gap, uh, Night of the Monster Man looks like Attack on Titan. It does. kind of does. Less depressing, though. Um... And then finally, the last big news item we have this week is Spider-Man Dead No More is apparently going to be called The Clone Conspiracy. And rumor has it that we are finally undoing One More Day, Brand New Day. Now, that isn't confirmed, but apparently that's what we're seeding now. And everyone's reporting it as the end of that that age of Spider-Man, which... Is interesting, but Dan Slott is still writing, and I hate Dan Slott Spider-Man, so I don't know how that's going to turn out. I I don't have anything to say about that, (laughs) but I'm filling the dead space. (laughs) To quote Peter Parker from Spider-Man 3, good riddance. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's exactly it. Um... I don't know how this is going to go. I'm not reading current Spider-Man, but I might look into it if this is actually getting rid of uh, Brand New Day. But we'll see. Mary Jane's in the Iron Man book right now. I don't know how they're going to connect the two, but whatever. We'll figure it out. Um, That's all the main news I have. Like I said, this has been a very slow week. Nothing major happened aside from some of this casting news. Um, So uh, why don't we go ahead and get right into our open forum. So... Everyone can go ahead and start posting comments now. Rasco, you can start looking when you see them. Uh, until then, let me just ask everybody, how was your weekend? How was your Father's Day? How's everybody doing? Well, Good. my dad lives two states away, so I called him. Oh, that, that's that was nice. my Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Rasco, what about you? Uh, it's been a pretty good weekend. Um, I was just out, actually... At, with at, at dinner with my dad before I before the show, so that's um, good. But um, yeah, it's been a pretty good weekend. Saw Finding Dory. Theater audience was terrible. <laughs> Audiences, yeah. That's good. Okay. Um, do we have any questions yet? Uh, somebody asks a uh, masked sci-fi fan thoughts on the Suicide Squad poster. Which one? The new one. The new one. Yeah, I assume. Oh, the big splashy. I have no idea before, what's going on poster. Before you guys say anything, I just really need to point out that I love it, and I have nothing else to say about it. You may now proceed to completely tear it apart. Go ahead. <laughs> I just think it looks weird. Like, it feels it feels like it's sensory overload to be like, look how cool we are, and I, I don't know. It looks weird to me. Um, it's working on me. <laughs> I'm like, fair. look how cool they are. Whoa. <laughs> 
everything's exploding and there's clip art everywhere. It's so cool. <laughs> The big thing for me right now is I'm excited to see what Jared Leto does with the Joker, but so much of that movie feels like we want to be Guardians of the Galaxy in marketing, and with the way Batman vs. Superman turned out, I'm really trying to manage my expectations for that movie. I don't want to get too excited, but I also don't want to be a naysayer either. I just want to, I want to see it, and then hopefully it's good. Yeah, um, that movie, like... It doesn't look like it's going to be a bad movie. It's just DC's track record at this point. You have to be trepidatious about it, right? Yeah. Exactly. It's difficult. Um, I want to be excited, but I don't want to be let down either. Um, any other questions? Um, okay, yeah. So, uh, Nero Cole, best part of E3 for everyone on the panel. Hmm. Ooh. Zelda... Zelda, 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 Zelda. The gameplay looks amazing. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, like, the hitbox is so, like, perfect and small, and, like, they're, like, just barely missing characters. The animation is amazing. Those fire mechanics. I'm so excited. <laughs> <sighs> Raska, what about you? Um, the most exciting... Okay, the most exciting game for me is the Friday the 13th game. Because that's a game that I have wanted to exist for so long, and it's, it's finally happening. It's such an easy premise to make into a multiplayer game. I'm just so excited for that. <laughs> um, yeah, that's exciting. I know everyone's going to want us to talk about the um, Spider-Man game, but Dan and Cap are going to do an E3 show. I might be there. I don't know. But um, they're going to do an E3 show, and I'm sure Dan's going to talk about it. So... For me, the most exciting thing is the gameplay we got of We Happy Few, which basically looks like um, another Bioshock-type game, and I love Bioshock. It looks really cool. Bioshock's creepy. amazing. Bioshock is amazing. It's, it's one of my favorite games of all time. Oh, yeah. um, it looks so creepy. I don't know what to make of it, but it's, it's another one of those... Um, you're like inside of a cutscene and dealing with a normal family, and then suddenly everything everything turns creepy and weird. And I have no idea what this game is going to be like, but it looks amazing, and I can't wait. Any other questions? Um, someone wants to talk about just if we if anyone's seen the trailer for the Spider-Man game, they want us to talk about that. Okay, well, everything it looks is awesome, awesome, but it looks great. Yeah, I just don't yeah. I don't understand the suit. What's with yeah, the I don't big white suit? Either, but I mean, it looks like a great game. Like. I love Spider-Man games just in general because yeah, since Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man has just like definitive, definitively been a great open world game. Um, so, I don't know. I'm excited for open world Spider-Man. My favorite Spider-Man game has always been the Ultimate Spider-Man game, and if it's anything like that, I'll be happy. Yeah, yeah. All the... I mean, I like Web of Shadows, I like Ultimate Spider-Man, and I like Spider-Man 2. I even like Shattered Dimensions, but I didn't play uh, the other out-of-whatever-time game that was. Um, I like those games. My only issue with Web of Shadows was that it wasn't open world. Um, that You had to, like, save right before the end of the game and then just pretend like you're open worlding. And then there's a part of the city you can't go into or you'll start the final mission. Oh, uh, true. That kind of bugged me. Um... Other than that, though, I, I do like that game. I like most Spider-Man games. I'm not a Spider-Man fan, but something about just swimming through the city as a video game is amazing. Yeah. Um, any other questions we've got? Um, yes. Okay, this is from Masked Sci-Fi Fan. Thoughts on the Justice League action roster? Um, I think we talked about that a couple of weeks ago, just the leaked photo of everyone that might be in the show with, like, Firestorm and Dr. Fate and everything. It looks fine. I'm, I just need to see more of it. Yeah, um, it's kind of a strange roster, some of the people that they're throwing in there, but, I mean, that's cool. I like when, you know, I like that they're shaking it up with the team. From with, with everyone involved, it's all past DC animated alum, so I have lots of faith in that show. From what I understand, it might be like a Brave and the Bold thing, but that's cool. I love Brave and the Bold. Yeah. Um, what else have we got? This is from Red Leader Antilles. Rasco, here's a question. Worst theater experience? Mine is from Force Awakens, where a little kid kept asking if each character that showed up was Luke or Leia. This includes <laughs> Chewie and Snoke. <laughs> um, I've already talked a million times about bad theater experiences, but Stephen Little. Hmm. When I went to see Civil War the fourth or fifth time, I can't remember, but when I went to see that the fourth or fifth time, uh, there were a pair of kids sitting next to me, 
And all they can do after he first showed up is make fun of T'Challa's accent. And I just want to... Like repeat lines. Like repeat lines badly and then say dumb things in the accent. Like it was just obnoxious and I wanted to throttle them. Mostly because I think that accent is awesome, but maybe that's just me. Yeah. I don't remember what movie it was. It wasn't Finding Finding Dory. It was whatever movie I saw before that, which I've completely forgotten. Uh, but the Minty? kid next to us, what? Was yes. It okay. Yes, it was the girl that was sitting. No, it wasn't. It was before that. I don't know. There was <laughs> a girl sitting next to us, and she just repeated everything that was happening on screen, and she was so excited the whole time. It was very strange. Like anything would happen, she'd be like, "Oh my god, oh my gosh!" <laughs> and she was like 14 or 15, so like I couldn't get mad at her, and she was with her family too, so like. It wasn't like she was with her friends and she was being, like, dumb on purpose. Like, she was literally just really excited, so it was half funny, but half, like, what are you doing? Like, calm down. (laughs) Theater etiquette seems to be dying, and that depresses me, because I like going into a theater where everything turns black and you're just, like, one among a crowd watching a movie. I don't like getting taken out of that by people. That's annoying. Yeah, um, I... Maybe it's... I was I was gonna say me and Connor recorded an episode of the well, there's I've only uploaded one episode of this so far to Geek Evolution but it's called Socratic Circle Cinema and it's like discussion topics of like related to like film and stuff like that and uh, the next episode is us recounting is that a word recounting I, don't know, it's I think yeah. calling yeah. I don't know it's it's us talking about terrible theater experiences so like watch that if you like hearing about terrible theater experiences. I don't know if it's just my proximity to L.A., but, like, I don't notice that as much here as I did in Washington. There certainly are times where it happens, but I feel like it, people are fine. Like, I, like I haven't noticed, like, recently that people have become less and less, like, polite in theaters. I don't know. Because I, cause I love going to the movie theater and, like being all in it, like having my popcorn and when everybody gasps together, it's great. <laughs> there's there are times when being in a theater just, there's a time when being in a theater is just awesome. Like when we saw when I saw Creed with my friend, the theater was so into it that at the end when they're chanting Creed, the entire theater was doing that. And when he gets knocked down, everyone like gasped. Like they're everyone in that theater was on exactly the same wavelength. It was disturbing and awesome at the same time. But then there are times where you watch a movie and you don't want to be mean, but there are people that are just that just don't seem to understand that checking your messages disturbs someone else because everything's dark and suddenly there's a phone shooting out. Um, I, maybe it's not just maybe it's not a recent thing. I think maybe it's just a matter of there are minor things now that become more glaring because we get used to them like cell phones. Like, if someone texts their phone in the middle of dinner or something, no one cares. But when you're in a black room, it's really disturbing. Yeah. Um, one of the most irritating things is when I look on my Snap... I like, when I look at people's Snapchat stories, and they're, like, taking pictures of the movie and being like, whatever movie... Like, this happened with Finding Dory. Some person put took a picture of Finding Dory, and then they're like, at Finding Dory, and I'm like... Do you go to the movies to watch movies? Are you just there to talk about how you were there, how you were part <laughs> of the experience on social media? Yeah, I agree. Uh, theater stuff gets annoying. I kind of wish that I could just like buy a theater and, and have it be my, my own and no one else can sit there and watch a movie but me. No, that's what there has to be. They have to start making these like private club theaters where you get like a <laughs> card and you have like three strikes and you're out. If you cannot be quiet, you're gone. Like you get little punches on your card for like demerits. That's what you have to happen. <laughs> there is an episode of We Bear Bears that's all about theaters getting worse with over time with people talking and um, not paying attention to the movie and, and not enjoying the experience as it's meant to be enjoyed. And it's a really good episode. I love that cartoon. It's One of the characters is voiced by Dimitri Martin, and I love seeing that guy get work. Um, but it's a good show, and it's a good episode about theaters. Um, yeah, it, the thing about movie theaters is this, like, People always talk about, like right now, because we're like on this, like tech- technology is advancing so far, so fast, and like, you know, now we have Netflix where like movies go straight to Netflix, Netflix original movies and stuff like that. And it's like, people have raised the question do theaters ever become, do they ever become obsolete? And the answer is no, 
unless people start talking because the one thing that a theater the one the one credit that a theater can always have is that you probably will never be able to experience a movie in a better setting than a quiet movie theater because it's dark it's quiet and the screen is giant but if people talk and the theater experience is not the best way to watch movies then movie theaters do become obsolete and movie theater chains have to realize that and they have to enforce their rules better because it's ridiculous i agree um, there are certain chains of movie theaters that do stuff like that. Like a lot of the times, they're more the ones that are like 21 and over chains will do things like that. Like I know, like I pick theaters are pretty strict. At least the ones that I've been to um, are pretty strict about like conduct. I think partly because they know they're gonna have drunk people. <laughs> um, <laughs> but they'll like they'll they'll like come shush you or like kick you out if you're being disruptive. Um, I know I I've never been to an Alamo Draft House, but it sounds like Alamo Draft Houses also do the same sort of thing. Although I think their thing is more that they do specialty food that, like, I don't know. That's yeah. from what I've heard of those, of those theaters. Cash does the same thing. Um, I like this question from Nero Cole. What are our favorite Broadway plays, if we've any seen any? Um, I think Lowe might have an answer to that. I, that is such a loaded question. I mean, like, obviously I'm me, and if you guys follow me on any social media, you know I'm obsessed with Hamilton right now. But I've I've right been now. following Broadway. Yeah, right now I am <laughs> uh, for like the last four months. But um, but no, I love Broadway. So like, uh, the last five years is one that I really love. Although I don't think that was ever officially on Broadway. But whatever. Um, Les Mis is amazing. Um, uh, I mean like I like all the classic ones. What? Does Cats count? Yes. <laughs> I think cats. Yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah. <laughs> that's I've like seen. that's like my least favorite Broadway show ever, and my husband loves it, and he like always <laughs> wants to listen to the music, and I'm like, oh, this play has no plot. It bothers me, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's just me. I can't stand Gabs, but um, my favorite is probably Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. I, I read that play in high school, mm. and then I saw it in production. I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. That argument about being a math teacher versus a history teacher is the greatest dialogue ever written. Um, I love that play. I love that that I read it all the time. It's so good, and I love seeing it performed. Oh, Spring Awakening is amazing, although it's dark and very mature. So all you youngins, <laughs> don't see it. <laughs> um, any other questions, Rasko? We still got some time. Um, Jesse wants to know: Have you, Steve? Have you been keeping up with Dragon Ball Super? If so, what's your thoughts on the future Trunks returning and Goku Bat Black as a villain so far? Uh, I, I've been keeping up with it. Um, I'm going to record a video either tonight or tomorrow about the latest two episodes on, on the Future Trunks Black Goku stuff, but I'm really liking it. My issue with this show has been it's being produced and the manga is being written at the same time, so Akira Toriyama gives the writers an outline of what he wants the events to be, and then he writes the manga and the episodes are put into production at the same time. And it used to be that the manga would come out before because the this show was just recapping the movies. But then the show caught up to him. And so now the manga is behind the show. And so it's creating like these filler arcs. Like everything from episode 43 to 46 was just a filler arc that didn't mean anything before the new one started. And so in places you know it's dragging because it has to stretch it out, and I don't understand why they can't just go on break instead of making things. Um, but of the arcs we've gotten yet, the Universe 6 stuff's amazing. Um, I love this idea of the Black Goku stuff. My only issue with it, though, is Dragon Ball Z power levels have gotten so insane that there's just no way to scale them anymore. There is no reason why anyone who can just barely defeat Cell would be a threat to a Super Saiyan Blue. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. You'd have to contrive some reason why, why Black Goku is the greatest, most terrifying thing ever. Um, and there might be a good reason. It's just you have to build it on a contrivance. And I love seeing Future Trunks again, but I, I hope I hope it doesn't disappoint with the explanations. Any other questions? Um, yes. This is from Seth. Motion movies. Do you guys have a movie slash TV show you're looking forward to most in the nearish future? Mm. Ooh. Nearish future. Um, I'm trying to think of stuff that's like premiering this fall. I haven't yeah. really thought about the future because we just got done with last season and I'm <laughs> sleeping instead of watching TV. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. 
I feel like a lot of the stuff I was looking forward to is already over. Um, I'm excited for Ridley for Alien Covenant. Um, Ridley Scott released just a little image a while ago, and it was just like a patch of one of the spacesuits, and it looked like one of the OG Nostromo spacesuits from Alien. <laughs> it looks like they're getting back on track with the Alien franchise, at least, and Ridley Scott just made The Martian. He seems to be reinvigorated in his, in his filmmaking career, so, like, I'm really excited for that movie, even though Prometheus is a very, like, what kind of movie, so, Yeah. Every time someone mentions Prometheus, I will always mention the Q&A Joss Whedon did where someone asked him, what do you think of Prometheus? And Joss Whedon's like, you mean from meaningless? <laughs> um, it was the greatest thing ever. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I'm really, really curious as to what Doctor Strange is going to be like, and I'm really curious as to what um, what Assassin's Creed is going to be like. That trailer is hysterical. The moment the Kanye music comes on, I died laughing. <laughs> but we'll see. I, I like some of the games. Um, if it's based... It's not based on really any of the games, but if it takes cues from, like, Assassin's Creed 2, I'm more excited. But we'll see. I just remembered that there is one TV show that's coming out this fall that I am sort of excited for, but I don't remember the name of it. It's the one that's uh, supposed to be taking place in the DC universe. Oh, But uh, it's, like, just about all the normal people. Powerless. Powerless. Yeah, and it has, like, a bunch of kind of, like, big, but, like, well-known names that I'm, like, excited for. Yeah. Um, um, it seems that, like an interesting premise. The guy that plays Abed's in it, Alan Tudyk's in it. Um, yeah, that's yeah. really great. I can't wait for that. Um, any other Ooh, questions? and somebody just mentioned the Punisher series in the chat. Oh, yeah. I'm very excited for that. Yeah. I don't know when that's filming, but it is happening. So that's going to be awesome. Um, any other questions? I think we'll do like a couple more and then we'll call it a night. Masked sci-fi fan. Is anyone here going to see Free State of Jones? Yes, if I can get the time. That looks interesting. I'll go see that movie. I'm not in love with the trailers, but I like Matthew McConaughey. That's my thing, yeah. <laughs> um, I like Civil War history. When I was in middle school, that's all they taught us, so I've just inadvertently become an expert in Civil War stuff. So just out of curiosity, I'll see it. Um, I don't know how much of that I've retained over the years, but we'll see. Uh, let's do two more. Okay, this is from William Parcell. Do you think Norman Osborn should be the Thanos of the Spidey series, with him manipulating events for multiple films before, before he becomes the Goblin? Mm -hmm. I like the idea of him manipulating events, but I want him to be the Goblin all the way through. I think part of what works about the Goblin initially is it is that it is a mystery, and if you can set up a situation where the Green Goblin's active for a period of time, like Spectacular Spider-Man, and then at the end make it Norman, I think it's much more satisfying than um, all this time teasing us with Norman and then getting to Goblin. Yeah, Here's the thing that I'm I don't want, and this is what didn't excite me about Spider about the Amazing Spider-Man franchise. I don't really like the idea of Oscorp being responsible for all of Spider-Man's villains coming into existence because I want villains like Mysterio. I don't want Mysterio to be some sort of like science project. I want Mysterio to be a guy who's really good with visual effects, and it's a the and he's a theatrical. He comes from that aspect. He comes from the the set Hollywood like that's that I don't want him to be some sort of like scientist and that's what bothers me about like making Norman Osborn this like Thanos figure where like everyone's part of Oscorp and that's what I didn't like about Amazing Spider-Man so I don't know I know it's easy to set up a bunch of villains that way but like I don't want all of his villains to be science related if they don't have to be I agree um Spider-Man's got a fantastic rogues gallery. It seems weird to limit everything to one centerpiece. It'd be like making the Joker's origin everyone's origin for Batman. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing it the way Spider-Man 2 did, where, like, Otto Octavius is being, like, funded by Oscorp. Like, that's fine. Like, I just don't want it to be like it was at the Amazing Spider-Man 2, when it's like, all of the Oscorp technology is all of the Sinister Six outfits and stuff like that. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to. DC Marvel fan guy makes a good point that it'd be better if Otto Octavius was the guy running behind, running everything. Um, I feel like 
him as a master manipulator makes way more sense than Osborne. Because Osborne's more about himself, and I think Otto is more strategic. Yeah. I was just thinking about a good actor that could play a Dr. Octopus, and I think Lawrence Fishburne would be a great Dr. Octopus. Oh, that'd be so cool. Um, okay, let's do one more. Okay, this is from William Parcell. Do you think Justice League is doomed to underperform? Hmm. I think it depends on how... Like, I don't think it's past the point... And no return. I think it depends how Wonder Woman does and how um, Suicide Squad does, and I'm not really sure of the order if, if there's anything else coming out before that. But no, I think that's it. I think those just those two. Yeah, I, um, I think that if those do moderately well, I, Suicide Squad is going to get, and like Wonder Woman is going to get more of the backlash from Batman vs Superman than Justice League necessarily will. I think that um, it's. They cannot market Justice League the same way they did with BVS, where it's just Zack Snyder going, it's going to be great because they're coming together. Like, he can't... That's literally... If you listen to Zack Snyder talk about BVS, his explanations for why it's going to be great... Like, this is pre-release of the film. He's like, they're coming together. It's just going to be crazy. It's They're coming together. And I'm just like, this is... Like, if, that, if they can't do that, because people are like, dude, like... We don't trust your movie to be good. Like, it, just saying it's going to be great because we're seeing them on screen, like, like that was enough to get people hyped up for BBS and movies like The Avengers, but, like, you can't just rely on that, and that is exactly what Zack Snyder is going to fall back on. That and Turkish Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> those commercials were funny, though. I know. I think those commercials <laughs> were better than the movie. The movie yeah, that. they are. They totally Turkish are. Airlines. Um... <laughs> No, you're right. Problem is, I, I kind of figured that no matter how bad of a movie it was and how much people hated it, Batman vs. Superman was going to make a billion dollars, and it didn't. Um, so if Wonder Woman and Suicide Squad don't get good reviews, I don't think Justice League is going to make money. Because if the, if the shock value of Batman and Superman being on screen together didn't entice people enough... What makes anyone think that more characters like that are going to entice anyone? Part of the reason the the Marvel method works is people liked these individual characters. So part of the reason the box out for the Avengers is always so big is that there are people going into that who only liked Thor or who only liked Iron Man, who only liked Captain America, and then they're paying all of that off. And so you get a bigger crowd that doesn't see every movie, probably saw some of them. Um, with Batman vs. Superman, you've got a, a good amount of people that saw it, and more than half of them hated it. So if that's what you're working with, then I don't really understand how you're going to expect Justice League to do incredibly well. You have to manage expectations. You have to make sure that that movie doesn't cost you an arm and a leg like Batman and Superman did. The biggest thing for that movie, I think, at this point is for it to make absolutely clear that it is not Batman versus Superman. That it is in that universe, but it's not relying on it, and it's a different direction. Because even if you like Batman versus Superman, the general public didn't. And Warner Brothers is going to be extremely reactionary about what people want from, from a Justice League movie, so it makes money at the end of the day. Warner Brothers, and like, like most movie companies, they don't care about artistic integrity, they care about how much return they're getting on their investment, which is fine, whatever, but if that's their mentality, then everything about, about Justice League is doomed to be reactionary, and every time that's happened, every time you've had a movie that's that's patchworked by committee because of the downfall of a previous movie, it's either ended up horribly, or it's ended up amazingly, so it could go either way, like, X-Men First Class was hobbled together on almost the last minute, and it's an amazing movie. But then so was um, so was uh, the X-Men The Last Stand. Um, and they're they're both on opposite ends of the spectrum, so you just have to be wary. Yeah, and I don't even think... I, I, I was just thinking about this the other day. If you actually look at the DC movie lineup, it is so much more reactionary than anyone ever believed. If you actually look at it, so okay, you, get, you have Man of Steel's the first movie that comes out. Okay, then you're getting BBS 
which the only reason BBS was the next thing is because they wanted to start building up the universe at a quicker pace. Okay, then you get Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad would not be the next movie coming out if Guardians of the Galaxy had not been such a huge hit. Okay, then yeah. you have Wonder Woman. So they're trying to get their foot in the door with like, oh, first female superhero solo movie. Okay, well, not really because we had like Catwoman, but that's a terrible movie and she's not really a superhero. Okay, whatever. <laughs> no, but then you get Justice. Hey, yeah, and what about Elektra? So soon, Justice League would not be happening so soon were it not for the fact that. The Avengers is already so far, like they've already Marvel so far into their whole their whole cinematic universe, and then Green Lantern's like the last movie that they're making because they know that Green Lantern was so poorly received the first time. So if you just look at even their movie lineup schedule, it's so reactionary before they even released any movies. So like if if we don't think like if people don't think that they're going to be really reactionary moving forward because of BVS's reception, even if you like BVS. There's a good chance that you don't like the direction that the franchise goes because I know that Warner Brothers is not satisfied with the way that movie turned out. They can't be. There, there's, there is literally no argument for Warner Brothers being happy with Batman vs Superman. It's just not possible. They lost money on that movie, um, and even if they made a little bit of profit, it didn't make anywhere near enough to justify its its cost. You can make Batman and Superman solo movies that cost half that that make double what this movie did. So. At that point, the best thing that they can do is just make a 180 and go in a different direction. Cap and I did a video on the future of the DC film franchise. I kind of figured that what they should do at this point is just scrap Justice League and keep moving forward with individual characters and then eventually get there. But then the more the more hardcore but also maybe more, more um, difficult move to pull off would be just make a Justice League movie and have everyone spin out of it. There have been great Justice League origins in the comics that introduced all the characters outside of their ongoings. You can do a Justice League movie that tells us who Wonder Woman is and then make a Wonder Woman movie. You don't need the step-by-step process that Marvel's created because Justice League, by its by its very nature, is more recognizable than something like The Avengers. Yeah. But Marvel's yeah. created such a yeah. weird marketplace now that where Justice League and, and Superman don't sell as well as Avengers and Captain America. Yeah. Like, the thing that Marvel did that was genius is, like, not everyone knew who the Avengers were in the same way that a lot of people know who the Justice League is. But from from Iron Man 1, you knew that they were building to something. So if you watch Iron Man 1 and you see that ending credit scene and you don't know what that is, what is that setting up? People went to look that up and they had years to make themselves familiar with the Avengers because they're like, oh, I guess this is what's eventually going to happen. That's why there are all these solo movies coming out. But Justice League doesn't need to do that. You're right. They so a lot more people know who what Justice League is than people who knew what the Avengers were pre Iron Man one. And even as far as kids go, every Justice League Justice League Limited had two seasons, and it's more successful than any of the Avengers cartoons. No one watches Avengers Assemble. Um, Earth's Mightiest Heroes was great, but it wasn't getting great views, and they didn't have a toy line. Um, and then there was an Avengers show in the '90s, which was just awful, called. I think United We Stand or something like that. Um, but the Avengers is, is very difficult to pull off. And when Marvel did it slowly and they built people's appreciation of the individual characters, it worked. It seems like DC is just trying to force their hand and make it so there's that we have Justice League just because we have Avengers. Like They're not thinking about this in terms of Justice League is a concept that's existed for years and people like these heroes and what they symbolize, let's put it out there and get more people to enjoy this material. They're thinking of it as, well, Marvel has Avengers, we need to do the same thing. And I think that's just the wrong way to approach making a movie. Yeah. Um, well, that was another sad note if people like TC, so we apologize, but oh well. <laughs> not as sad of a note as it could have been. No, no, it is if not. If we had left... Other things till the end. And now I'm bringing it up again. Quick, something happy. Um, Use your Poe Dameron headphones. That's happy. That is very happy. I wish I had Poe Dameron headphones. I'm still reading the comic. I need I need to get more of that. Um, is there anything else um, you see that, that we should probably talk about? Any news or anything like that? Anything last minute before we sign out? Because I'm not seeing anything big. Uh, no, I don't see any like news questions or anything like that. Okay, that sounds good then. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and call it a night. Thanks, everybody, for watching live. Captain Logan should be back with you tomorrow along with Dan to talk about E3. 
And um, at some point during this week, Eric and I are going to talk about Voltron Legendary Defender Season 1 uh, because we both started watching that and we both have, have things to say. So that will come out eventually. Um, until then, you have um, Comic Book Late Night Tomorrow with Lo and Cat. Woo! And Rasko's got his Socratic Circle Cinema coming out relatively soon, I imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you've got a pretty big lineup coming out next week. But until then, thanks everybody for watching. This was Rasko. Peace out, everybody. And the Curious Low. Bye. And we'll see you next time.